Oh, Tyler, demo day, it's finally here. It's my favorite day, man. Oh, mine too. You get all the studs figured out? I'm marking them out right now. You sure that thing's working okay? I think so. Oh, Gosh, man. it gets yep, in place. Working. Working. Okay, we got right. this. All right. <laughs> sure. You know what? This is the third time this year it's we're progress. All clear. It's progress. No no I know we've redone there, this good. all the time, but we really have to do it again. Oh. I know. We have so much work in front of us. We really do. There's all sorts of new light fixtures, finishes that we need to display, and we just we need to make it grow. I know. We need more room. We do. And you know, we have a lot of good helpers. But it's nice they're willing to help at least. That's so awesome. let's, let's go pick out what we want to do. You know what? Are you ready to do this, guys? Come on, let's watch. All right, let's do it. All right, we're going to demolition this. We're building right, build a bigger, bigger room. All right, demo. One, two, two three. Oh! Yes! Oh. 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 Izzy, you said the power was out. You said the power was off. Now what it is off. What are you doing? Oh. I think we lost power in the whole city. Are you kidding me? Show's over today, guys. It's time to go. Having to work by candlelight is just ridiculous. Well, I, th I think he finally has the lights back on, guys. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Right. That's right. cool. Hey, Lonnie, I think we're ready to start. Would you go ahead and start for us? Sure. Hey, welcome to Between the Studs. I'm Lonnie Norris, and this is part of the Granite Ridge Builders crew, including Tony Ranke, our president. Thanks for joining us today as we discuss and talk about building a custom home in your neighborhood or one of ours. It's a very vast subject. What, what, by the way, what are we talking about? Well, today? I think you can tell light fixtures and lights are so important to a new home, a remodeling home. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about that, especially since lights are probably the most misunderstood, probably the most under budgeted mm -hmm. type of component in a new home. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So what do you guys think? about the history and what are some of the components that you want to talk about today? You know, my favorite thing is with the history with Edison and how he came up with the light bulbs, how many different filaments he experimented with. You know, the first incandescent filament lasted about 13 and a half hours. <laughs> well, then he went down to Fort Myers so he could experiment with bamboo a little bit and that lasted over 1,200 hours. Oh. And I was down there and I still have the oh. original one from oh. the mansion there. <laughs> Well, I can tell you one thing. A guy my age needs three times as much light as a guy that's 20 years old. I'm getting ready to put floodlights in my great room. Oh, please don't, Lonnie. Please don't. Need them. Need Lonnie, em. That's, that's designed for all, and that's exactly what Granite Ridge has become famous for, too, is just this understanding of what needs to happen. These simple things that are helpful for one person actually become very comforting for all of us. And it's such a large subject. I'd like to be able to talk about the terminology. It's so hard to understand what everything is, and it's, it's a lot of fun to be able to explain how we came about with all of those terms. I love the evolution of the bulbs, the different shapes, the different color tones coming out of the bulbs these days. It's very interesting. Jen, you talk about the bulbs. I like the light fixtures themselves. They've really evolved, and we do so many different styles of homes here at Granite Ridge Builders. We've got uh, different fixtures for every style. Well, I think the audience is really gonna find this interesting, and what we're gonna try to prove is that a lot of these fixtures aren't doing what you think they can do, and I think we've got an infrared light, or maybe be able to show what we can do. You're right, Tony. I've got an infrared gun right here, which is gonna show us the temperature of all these lights within their specific rooms. All right, well, why don't you open up? Let's all get to our parts and pieces that we like the best and uh, start the show. Okay. Yes. I want to start today by introducing a new member to today's show. This is Jen Nelson here. She's been on the show a couple of times before. But Jen is a designer here at Granite Ridge Builders, and she has been with Granite Ridge for over 16 years and has an extensive lighting background knowledge that's going to help us with today's show. Thank you, Kayla. It's great to be here. So what we're going to talk about today, what Tyler's doing behind us here, he's positioning the lights directly over the countertops, and it's going to make a huge overall impact in the lighting in a kitchen and in different parts of the home. It's so important that now to get the right light levels where you need it. So computer simulation is a new test that we can do to determine that we're getting the light in the areas that we need it. You're right, Jenny. With this infrared gun, we can actually look at a kitchen any room in your house with the type of lights that you have and see which areas are the most lit. What we're seeing here is when you look at your screening here, the areas that are bright red are the areas that are receiving the brightest amount of light. And as, as you move away from those resources, you're noticing that the blue areas are where we don't have the lighting. 
This is gonna be really important in kitchens, especially when we're talking about lighting layout. A lot of times you're gonna go into a kitchen and it's the lighting's gonna be on the perimeter or the hallway areas, but that's not gonna light the countertop that you need very well. So Jen and I are gonna get into a little bit more in-depth conversation about this of lighting layers and, and how to correctly light a room so that you don't have pockets of unused light. All right, why don't you two girls go finish up and talk about uh, some more lighting and then I'll take some videos so you guys can see which areas of this kitchen are the most lit for the homeowner. That would be awesome. Let's Thank go over you. here. I think our spot, you know, I think we're really good. Well, Jen, you and Kayla talked about how things are evolving as it relates to the lighting industry and light fixtures. And if we're going to talk about light fixtures, we also have to talk about light bulbs, right? Well, I have to correct you, Lonnie. Actually, what we're looking at here is actually called a lamp rather than a bulb. That's a lamp? It's a lamp. I thought that was a lamp. Well, that's a lamp too, but in the industry, your actual devices there are called lamps. And this is what we call incandescent? That is an incandescent. It's what uh, we've used for many, many years. And I can see there's a little uh, something going across, making an arc. It is. That's a filament in the inside of your lamp there. Uh, these particular lamps have not been known to be very efficient. And they're really hot. They're hot and they burn out quickly. And we're not using those as much as we once were. What else is old and, and we'll start with the old and maybe go to new. Okay. Well, something I want to show here is actually called a PAR lamp. Um, mm. PAR lamps, you can really see the difference on those because they look like the front of an old, uh, an old car. <laughs> they do. Yes. They look exactly like my headlamps. Yes, but they were used for areas where they could get wet, areas where you wanted a little bit more lighting, but they usually were uh, comprised of, of, of a halogen source. Halogen, that's another term. Is that a gas? It is a gas. So we moved from filaments to halogen. Mm -hmm. Can you give me other examples of some of the old sure. lamps that are sure. more common, with, common or familiar with? We used to see a lot of these elliptical type bulbs yeah. used in recessed light in our homes. Um, it would be yeah. an incandescent source. Sometimes they would be halogen, but again, they would get hot. Uh, they would burn out quickly um, and they would be, you know, just be a hard thing to try to keep on top of. Okay. And I, can we call those flood bulbs or flood lamps? They're flood lamps or what they okay. would be called. All right. Another idea. Yeah. And something that uh, is kind of important, especially with chandeliers and things of that nature would be um, what we would call our candle lamps. So our CA bulbs. CA. Why are they called CAs? Well, if you look at the top, they're mimicking a candle. Okay. And um, yeah. also the sh bases of them can be different. This is a candelabra based uh, bulb. Um, or lamp, and this here is a medium uh, base. So depending upon the needs of your light fixture, um, there are many different types of decorative candle bulbs that could be used in fixtures. And this one has a filament, so this would be still considered incandescent? That would be incandescent. And um, you know, across the board, there are different ways. There were halogens in those versions, oh. um, as well as some of the new uh, sources that are coming out now. Okay. What else we have here on the table? Oh, a G bulb. A G O G. Yeah, a G lamp. Mean? A G <laughs> lamp is um, a fixture. If you remember the old Hollywood strip lights that you would have above your vanity in the mirrors. I've got a bunch um, of these at home. Yeah. They don't help very much. They don't help, but they do help keep a room warm of all the heat that they would produce. <laughs> okay. And what, where are we going with these? You said most of these are incandescent or halogen? Yeah, that, well, what we're finding as uh, a lot of the energy codes, we're seeing some of our uh, you know, basic A, a lamps going to the wayside. Well, what's happening now is the use of LEDs. LED bulbs are uh, wonderful bulbs because they use uh, low power, they give lots of lighting, and uh, they're just very uh, efficient to use. LED, does that mean we have lead in these bulbs? <laughs> no, Lonnie. Okay. Actually, what we're talking about is a light emitting diode. So in essence, there, this really isn't a bulb this, or a lamp. This is a housing for a small chip. Wow, how things have changed. I know I have bought these and these things last a long, long time. They do, uh, up to 25 times longer than incandescent bulbs. That's unbelievable. And also they take a lot less energy? They use a lot less energy. So we, you know, you, you, you may pay a little bit more for them in the beginning, but in the, in the end, you are able to regain the cost that you've spent. Now you told me this is something that's old, but that's also very new. What, what do you mean by that? Well, Lonnie, we get a look of a vintage bulb, and especially in a lot of the decorative fixtures that we're seeing these days, but you're getting the efficiency of an LED. So you're able to kind of kill two birds with one stone. You get the decorative shape of lamp, but you get the energy savings and you get the um, 
of, of an LED. Hey, before we finish, Jen, there's one more light that's really cool. Explain what this is and how it works and why it's so popular today. Well, what's interesting about this is it's actually called a retrofit LED uh, lamp holder. So what it is, is this is your LED lights now. Um, but what is the most interesting thing is that there's not a bulb in here. No. This is this is again just an LED chip um, that we can use diff several different light levels um, and color temperatures to achieve what we're wanting to accomplish in our design. So this can replace this. Yes. yes. I think it really pays if, when it comes to light fixtures and light lamps that you go to some place like Wabash Electric or see somebody like Jen here at Grand Ridge Builders to help you with your lightings because there's so many things to think about. What about light or, or flashlights? Are they changing as well? <laughs> well, probably so, but they'll always be a mainstay for flashlight. Come see us. We're glad to talk to you about light. to the rest of the lighting areas and all the different types of fixtures that are out there for the home, I think it's great to go back to the basics and kind of describe the four major types of lighting that are out there. One of the first and foremost ones are going to be decorative lighting. Um, decorative lighting is something that is going to set the tone of your home, which could be maybe in a chandelier, maybe a high tech pendant that you have going on, or maybe something fun that might be in the bathroom. So decorative lighting is something that's gonna really set the course of the home as far as design and style. You know, the one that I wanna talk about would be ambient lighting. Ambient is gonna be your general overall light. When you walk into the home and flip on your light fixtures, that's gonna be the overall light that you're gonna see. So we're gonna be talking about several recessed cans in a great room or a kitchen. We're gonna be looking at flush mounts in the bedrooms or laundry rooms. It's gonna be the main light and how you get a light source into that room. Another type of lighting is accent lighting, one of my favorites, because it's a way that you can uh, highlight some of the architectural fixtures in a, in a home. Uh, maybe you've got a stone wall, or maybe you have a brick accent that you're wanting to light. One of my favorite lights to use is a recessed can, mm -hmm. and if you space it correctly on the ceiling, you can wash the wall to take advantage of all that texture. So that's for artwork, that can be for fireplaces, the accent lighting, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. and, and to go hand in hand with that, it has to be task lighting. So task lighting is also going to be that direct light, but that's going to be for more functional uses like your, your work table or uh, a kitchen table if that's going to be your workstation area, a lamp uh, for people who like to sew or read. Your task lighting is very, very important for your everyday use. I think what we find is one of the best designs is going to take advantage of all of these types of lighting. You definitely want to mix these lights and we can almost make a case that a fifth type of light that you want to mix in with these other four is going to be daylighting from your windows. It's very important to have as much natural light as possible into your home and, and that even goes to show, I mean, most people will obviously say their, their nooks and their great rooms are going to have windows, but we want to try to get them in bathrooms and laundry rooms because it's really going to bring your home to life to have as much natural lighting as possible to mix with some of these. Yeah, and, and let's just talk about layering because I think some of the best designs do take advantage of all those types of lighting, especially like in a kitchen where you've got your under cabinet lights, you've got recessed can lights that are giving you the task lighting, and maybe your fun, funky pendants over your island that's giving your home some character. A kitchen is a really great example to see layered lighting, but don't forget you can even do layered lighting in the bathroom. You can have your ambient light by having a, a main fixture as you walk into the bathroom, and you can have your accent lighting be your vanity lights or a fun chandelier over the tub. So it's really important to consider how to do your layered lighting and use all of these basic types in your house. Hey, Izzy, the subject is exterior lighting, a very important part of the home, isn't it? It is, and for several different reasons, we'll address many of them today. But first of all is safety and security. Of course, everyone wants to feel safe in their own home, and a well-lit home often makes you feel much more safe. Right, and things like motion detectors, they might cost mm -hmm. 25 or $30, a very important part of a home, potentially, on the outside. And of course, second for us would be just accent and style. So with down lighting, up lighting, uh, whether that be on trees or the house itself, there's lots of different ways to really accent your home. Right, and when it comes to picking out lights, a lot of, a lot of people make a mistake there. They actually pick too small a fixture. Mm -hmm. So you have to think about balance and proportion, the size of your home, the area that you're gonna light, mm -hmm. to make sure you get that right fixture in the right location. 
And don't forget holiday lighting too. It's a great time again when you're building to start to anticipate the light needs that you'll have for the holiday seasons and prep for those, whether they be extra switches or outlets, different things like that that you can do. Yeah, something that's very important, it's kind of a stud tip, is when you're building this custom home, do some pre-wiring. Plan mm -hmm. ahead for some of those things that you may want to do down the road as it relates to lighting. And lastly, lighting, lighting can make a huge difference for us on first impressions and resale opportunities. You don't realize that sometimes when someone comes to see your house for the first time, it might be in the evening and wow, can you make a great first impression if you've done your job with lighting. And another thing that's kind of important, we're actually working with some customers right now about their landscaping and they want to incorporate a lot of lighting in the landscaping. The drawings are over here. Let's see if we can Let's help them out. Let's go look at it. to talk about lighting 101 because I was definitely one of the people who didn't know what I was doing when I went to the light store, picked up a bulb that was 5,000 Kelvin and I went to my house and it was blue and I did not want a blue room. So it is really important to understand what it, when it comes to bulbs and types of lighting, the 101 and, and what everyone's talking about. So can you help us out, especially when it comes to color temperature? Oh, I can. It's such a big subject right now, color temperature. You're having hearing uh, the term Kelvins. Mm -hmm. um, Kelvins is, is a measure of temperature. Um, it's, it, Kelvins are going to measure anywhere from 2700K up to 5000K, depending upon how light or how warm and how cool you want your bulbs to be. So when we're talking about the 2700 Kelvin, that's going to be what people are very used to, um, incandescent lighting, that warm, a little bit yellow sort of a light that you're going to be used to in most of the homes. And then as you go up, it gets a little bit more white or closer to what they call daylight. So 3000 Kelvin, you're saying is going to be just a little bit more white. And then when we talked about the 5000, that's like daylight or almost a little bit blue, correct? That is correct. What we're finding out right now that we're using a lot of the 3000 Kelvin temperature outside because it does help to uh, really illuminate the exteriors. Um, a lot of people do prefer the 2700K in the interior because it does mimic more of the incandescent lighting, but really it's coming down to a preference and what our, our buyers want. Absolutely, and again, that's all talking about color temperature. Another thing that it gets confusing kind of looking at all of these boxes and, and what do all the labels mean when I'm trying to find my kind of the right kind of light for my fixtures? I think that's one thing that a lot of the manufacturers are trying to acknowledge that it's hard for people to try to discern what all the information is. So one of the things that we're seeing on a lot of the new uh, bulbs that we're seeing come out and all of the new lamps is the lighting facts. There's there'll be a little uh, little code on the on the light bulb package, and it'll kind of explain to you a little bit about where the lighting temperature uh, fits. You know, is it more of a cool or whether it's a warm light? Okay, so this one is saying lumens and watts and, and and right now, we're having a very big transition going from incandescent lights to LED lighting. So when you're looking at a package and trying to figure out, you know, everyone's so used to watts, but that's not really how LED is, is measured in watts anymore because there's hardly any um, coming out of an LED. So how do we help and try to figure out what is the right LED bulb for me? The key word here is the word lumen. So lumen refers to the light output, and that's really how you can compare uh, lamps to lamps. So that's going to be the brightness of the fixture and how yes. much I can get in my overall room. So when you're wanting uh, something that was very similar to your incandescent of a 120 watts, you're trying to get you know the most amount of lumens possible to that. That is correct. And another factor is color rendering. Mm -hmm. So we want our colors to look true to form. So one of the things that we're looking for is the color rendering index. Uh, color rendering index of 100 is perfect. So when you're looking at your bulbs and you're looking at your lumen and packages, look to see where we lie in the lumen level. So if you're around a 90, uh, 90 percent, that is a good lumen level. Well, we really hope this helps as we're going throughout the show talking about all the light fixtures and lighting options for you. So Kayla, when it comes to lighting throughout the home, my clients want to spend the most time undoubtedly in the kitchen, right? Absolutely. Let's talk first about what is the ambient lighting or the main general lighting in a kitchen. When you walk into a kitchen, you're typically going to see recessed cans spread throughout the perimeter. It's really important to get that over the countertop a little bit more than just in the hallway. That way it lights the countertop and when you stand at a kitchen countertop, the light isn't going to be behind you or shadow your countertop. 
So once we get away from recessed cans, what's another option, maybe like what we have behind us here? So pendants are so much fun, and we really have long discussions about pendant lights because they can match nook lights, they can be in a collection for the rest of the home, and it does set the tone of the kitchen. Pendant lights are gonna be considered more of your decorative light, but it can also double as a task light if it's over the island, and that could be you know your direct lighting right there. And we really are getting larger fixtures. You know, Instead of two or three small fixtures, we're having two large, huge drums or you can even have more of like a pool light over an island where it comes from one and spreads out throughout that island you can have so much fun with pendants yeah if any of our folks watching at home want to see it we have a wide variety of those in any of our model homes that are open every Sunday feel free to go take a look at those absolutely so what are some other lightings we talk about task lighting Kayla so I love to talk about under cabinet lighting under cabinet lighting is really important and, and once you've had it it's really hard to go away from under cabinet lighting how well that lights your countertops and there's so many different types of under cabinet lights you can do LED fixtures, you can do strip fixtures, even tape or rope lighting, uh, all sorts of different kinds that lighting professionals can help you with. Yeah, that task lighting typically goes underneath, as you mentioned, but if you wanted to do some accent lighting, you can put that above the cabinets, right? Absolutely. So we're talking rope lighting above your cabinets if there's room there, or even if you have a fun island with some glass, you can even light something like that there. You could light the toe kick underneath, which we've done before, and you can see pictures of. It really is amazing how well you can light your kitchen and what it does to the feeling of your home and the overall design. And the great news, Kayla, is that anybody watching can come to into our showroom and see examples that you've strategically placed throughout the showroom in one of our four or five kitchens. Absolutely, this is a great place to come get some amazing ideas. Come on out to the Grand Ridge showroom. Sconce light fixtures are becoming more and more popular here. And when we're talking about sconces, they're gonna be a decorative or even an accent light. That's right, Kayla. A lot of times we see sconces in the interior of the home, but sconces have been around for a long time. They originally started in medieval times with torches and candles, and a lot of times we see them today in the interior home using electricity or different you know, fixtures to accent different areas of the house. And they're always going to be on the wall like you see behind us here, and that's what we're referring to with the sconce fixtures. A lot of times you're probably used to seeing them maybe above a fireplace um, on either side of a picture or in a foyer really accenting that sort of a a picture in, in a foyer, hallway lights. There's a lot of different places you can use sconces. That's right, Kayla. A lot of times I'm used to installing them in the master bedroom. Uh, the sconces are usually used as an accent light to accentuate the side um, nightstands or tables next to a master bedroom bed. And some of the pictures we have here, it's so much fun to see some different types of decorative as well as accent lights that they've used where one looks like a star on either side of your nightstand there. And one thing to consider too would be bathrooms. We've been using a lot of sconces in bathrooms because people like windows above their mirrors. So you don't really have room for a decorative fixture in over a vanity. So you really get your good lighting and your accent lighting on the sides of you with a sconce. That's true, Kayla. A lot of times when I see those in the master bedroom, they really, or even in the master bathroom, Room, they really give it a nice look. Don't forget about sconces. It's something to talk about with a designer here at Grant Ridge Builders who can help with your lighting layout. You know, Kayla, one thing that I think is really fascinating, you know, going back to those medieval times, but the word sconce actually is Anglo-French for screen candle, which makes sense because using uh, the candles or the torches that they had in that time, that was the easiest way to describe uh, the type of lighting or the word that they were using. Don't forget to come out to Granite Ridge Builders so that we can help design your lighting layout with a professional. As we talk about lighting, one major component of that is in different rooms, such as the kitchen, but really a lot of people don't spend enough time thinking about their lighting in the bathroom and all the different things that may be needed. Absolutely. It's something to consider. I think one of the most abused places in a bathroom has got to be lighting your shower. Oh, so we yeah. want to really talk in depth about how to light your bathroom well here. Another portion of the lighting is the mirrors makeup. There's a lot of different aspects to this, including whether you just have those lights turned up or turned down on that mirror. Absolutely. So one thing to consider too, we hear a lot of people saying, well, when I get up in the morning and I walk into my bathroom, I don't want to be blinded by light, but they do want good overall light to get ready in. So one thing to think about is layering lighting in the bathroom is very, very important. So you want to talk about having a main light fixture as you're walking in. Your decorative or accent lighting can be your vanity lights. You could have a little bit of task lighting, depending on if you have sky is coming to the side right. and one thing to really consider in a bathroom would be dimmers and even okay. night lights too there's a lot of usage when we come when it comes to bathrooms to think about in lighting 
one aspect that we're seeing more and more of is natural light coming into the bathrooms as well, correct? Absolutely. If you can, try to get a window in your bathroom for natural lighting. That's going to help your overall layered lighting effect like we've talked about. And even thinking about your color temperature like Jen and I talked about earlier in the show. Some people like a little bit more white light getting closer to daylight so they can tell how they're going to look um, outside when they're when they're in different in different places. So leaning towards that 3000 Kelvin is, is typically recommended in a bathroom. The biggest part about the bathroom is we need to know how you live. We need to know how many people are going to be in there, if the husband and wife getting ready at the same time. We need to know what kind of lighting you need to have there and we know the right questions to ask. So make sure you come into Grand Ridge Builders and let's talk to you about all the different kind of lighting that could happen in your bathroom. And I really love that this fixture is the ambient and the task. Yeah, you got the task one right down here. Perfect. Look at, look at, you can see everything. So Jen, when we talk about lighting in the home, a lot of people think about the bulbs, they think about the fixtures, but often they don't think about the switches themselves or the wall covers. You know, traditionally, I can only remember just the, the toggle switches. That's the only thing I used to see. I know you're right. And today's homeowners want something a little bit more tech savvy and something a little bit more decorative. So let's start with the first one. We got some rocker switches on the bottom, correct? These are rocker switches, and I think what makes these most important, notice we don't see any screw heads on these devices. Very clean lines on a lot of these plate covers now. So uh, opposed from just the standard rocker switch, what other features do we have on some of these ones above here? Well, features can range from night lights uh, to uh, timers to dimmers, you name it. So Jen, everybody's used to walking into the room, flipping a switch, whether it be a rocker or a toggle. We've got some ways now where the lights will come on automatically. Is that correct? Yeah, we're seeing these quite often right now. What we're seeing right now are the uh, vacancy sensors. Uh, we just walk into a room and hands-free, the light pops on. It's going to be a big talking point when we talk about lighting nowadays. There's also a few fixtures that we're kind of hiding in new to Granite Ridge that I'm really excited about. Why don't you talk about this one? Yes, this is a new device uh, from uh, our Adorn collection. What we have is a pop-out night light that you could actually carry from one room to the other and safely get there with your light. So Jen, other than lights that are attached to switches, some people still use traditional lamps that sit on the floor. We've got some cool ways to plug those in, is that right? Oh, we do. Right now we have a great uh, option. It's called a pop-out receptacle. So you're able to actually plug in in three locations, push back when you want a clean look on your switch. All reasons, guys, you need to come into the Granite Ridge showroom and take a look at all these different products that have something to do with lighting. favorite part of designing a home has got to be the lighting and so this has to be my favorite show we've done all year. I know it. Yeah, lighting is started. so important for the overall look of your design. It absolutely is and we touched over so many different topics today to really give the audience a great idea of what amazing lighting will do for your home. Great show. Hey, would you go ahead and close for us? Absolutely. As always guys, we want to thank you for spending part of your day with us. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about who we are, what we do, and why we do what we do so well, please just pick up the phone, give us a call, visit the website below, even better yet, come in our front door. We'd love to share so many bright ideas on how you can introduce lighting into your new custom home. Okay, I think we're ready to start the remodeling again. Oh, no. oh. I'm going to get out of the way. Let's go find a safe I've spot. Got got the the it's yeah. my turn to take Let's a whack at this. Is he you got right? yeah, yeah, the part. He's doing that. We're out of here. Ah, no, no. Come on. You need a bigger hammer. Watch out. I try to think about it. You guys want me to show you how it's done? Oh! Oh! And so that first bite for many people is going to be the lighting over their island. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I was thinking of something else. Yep. <laughs> so one of the first bites that most people do is going to be picking out the lights over their... Over the island. Island. Yes. I'm like, uh, 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 really? He's the, this is where I come in? So once you get that first uh, solution, it's really the first step in, oh, that was horrible, I can't figure out how to do it. That's all, folks. <laughs> he said it. <laughs>